Ready, go! <laughs> But look at the face of yes. Lara. He knows he's right in this match and he starts to apply yeah, that man. pressure. There's the speed. Ready, go! Oh, no, no. What's up guys, I'm Alex. I'm Jason. We're the Table Monkeys and today we are going to continue talking about the triad of arm wrestling techniques. We touched on the post uh, in our previous video, so now we are going to talk about the hook. Yes, and in this video <coughs> we're going to talk about keys to finishing with a hook, uh, some of the main lanes that you're going to be hitting into, transitions, offensive, defensive, and then some tricks in the setup that you can use. And also how to regrip. <clears throat> how to regrip. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so first thing we're gonna start with is key to finishing. Uh, if you did see our post video 2.0 card up in the window, go check that out. Um, the fit, key to finishing for a post we established was speed, was being able to hit it effectively fast, uh, being explosive, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we made the point that if you think about most post matches and great post pullers, they're usually quick finishes. Now, if converting or turning over to the hook. Complete opposite. Exactly. Yeah. If you think about hooking, you think about battles deep inside, long matches, grinders, back and forth, test your frame, all that shit that most people love yeah. about arm wrestling, <laughs> right? Uh, so um, being a previous Kings mover and having really uh, refined my hook over the last say like six months I love I love hook pulling now and it's uh, yeah it gets me excited so uh, let's talk about the hook so the key to finishing a hook is commitment That's and it. positioning yeah um, so you're not really gonna splash your pin your opponent with a hook unless you're much stronger than them it's gonna be a battle right and so off the go you need to commit your shoulder commit your hand get your cup set and commit your frame commit your frame and yeah and then and battle then, from there exactly and from there it's basically just more and more commitment um or positioning as alex said and the reason we choose the word commitment is because it really is about coming forward being dedicated uh to that move to getting deeper usually when you're hanging on like you've, you're gonna have to hang on past a point of like I don't know what's about to happen, let's find out, <laughs> kind of like thing in your head and then you get used to it and then you kind of know you're going to be okay. Um, where like with other moves you might start moving around or making transitions once things get dicey in a hook. That's kind of what you're looking for, you know? And uh, and in that battle, like a lot of the repositioning you get is as as those like, as we're both going for a commitment, one of us kind of wins a bit of that position and then we stay committed and the other guy backs up or doesn't, you know, it gets at a disadvantage of a position, and that's kind of how that battle continues to go, right? Yeah, so let's talk about that battle. Let's, let's talk about some of the main lanes that yeah. you're going to be uh, using, uh, the pressures that you'll be hitting into in a hook. Yeah, so in, in the post video, we made the point that, uh, so right off the bat, the first thing was establishing height, and then once you established height, you had basically a 90 degree angle that you're trying to attack here. And with the hook, it's very similar. So if we dive into a hook, we're both committed with our shoulders. From this position here, I basically got two directions that I can pull in, and everywhere in between of those two directions, like I can combine them. Or I can use them like, like Kind of, I like thinking of it like punches, like I'm punching this direction and this direction and trying to use those to attack your opponent's arm. So again, the way we like to think about the arm is the way Derek Smith explained it, right? Mm -hmm. So there's three points. You got your shoulder, you've got your bicep or your elbow and your wrist, right? Uh, or your hand. Yeah. So, um, so the first direction going straight is, is just a drive is what we call it on the hill. We'll throw the hill up. So hook and drive is just coming straight to the side. Okay, that's and, really gonna attack my shoulder. Mm -hmm. It places a lot of stress on my elbow because now I'm outside my shoulder, but it's really about attacking yeah. my shoulder joint. Yeah, exactly. And that's, uh, again, as you learn your opponents, you're gonna wanna learn where they're strong. And a lot of the time, if, they're, like, if their shoulder is strong, maybe you have to attack their hand to get to their shoulder. Or if their bicep is strong, I find a lot of the times I have to attack my opponent's shoulder in order to get their bicep out enough that I can actually attack their bicep. So attacking the bicep is the, the drag motion, yeah. right? So if this is straight to the side, drag is straight back yeah. and down. You can see how that just opening up my bicep, making me weaker the more and more I get extended. Yeah, and the key here, the way I like to think of it is if uh, you're doing a pull up, 
like this, this motion. So as I drive to the side, I've got my hand like close to my face. I'm driving up like this. And then I shift the pressure down like that and drag my elbow from the front of the pad to the back of the pad while keeping my body tight to the table and kind of dropping my body weight on my hand through my elbow. That so fucking down twist. That fucking down <laughs> twist, man. It's the best. Yeah. I got you with a down twist. Yeah. Do you want it? Run, run, run. Fucking down twist. <laughs> Gets you every time. And then, as we said, uh, I really like to use these in a combo and you can hit different, like you can hit a bit more out this way. So there's still some side pressure, but I'm dragging too. Like you can hit all those angles in between, but I like just mixing between those two and kind of sawing my opponent down, right? Yeah. Uh, and then the last pressure, the way you kind of get into the hand with the hook, you're trying to get past the hand. So you're not working the hand the same way as you are with the other two top rolls. Um, and the, the way you work the hand is kind of like a reversal. So it's kind of like being in a hook and then going to a low hand rollout, but I'm not really trying to roll you all the way out. I'm just trying to distract you from holding a different direction, right? Yeah. So like if you do it to me, like he's pulling me, so he's in a defensive position now, he's pulling on my hand here. And by doing that, it gives him all of a sudden an opportunity to attack my shoulder more. And, and I'm, I'm not focused on holding here, I'm focused on holding here. So when he's pulling this way and then jets that way, it takes me way outside my shoulder, you know? Yeah, and this is <clears throat> one of the ways that you can get your traditional hook into more of a high hook where you have everything positioned and very Devon style where you make your opponent quit yeah. from a complete dominant position. Yeah, and I guess that that could lead us to the transitions, Yeah. right? So uh, it, it, as Alex said, as, as you're kind of working through those two directions or continuing to try to get better position, uh, as much as you're trying to get depth, you're also trying to establish height and pronation because this position here is by far the best hook position you can be in because I can drive to the side, I can drag, and I'm here to roll with my shoulder as well, right? Yeah, or, or top or, roll. Or even top roll out, yeah, yeah reversal again. Um, <clears throat> but the drive with the shoulder, that's the main offensive transition we yeah, want to talk this, about. This is the strongest strongest move in the game right here. Yeah. When you're in high hook position and you press on it, there's nothing stronger than that. Yeah, and once you, where they really, where that move really becomes effective is once your opponent's arm has been opened up a little bit, and that's where, so if you were to like go back traditional hook and like drive, drag, and then get yourself into that high hook, you see he pulled my arm out, and then kind of the same way we talked about with the post and pulling yourself up, he just rolled through his supination himself back into a pronated position where his shoulder's now behind his thumb, and, and I'm really in a compromised position. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the, the defensive uh, counters we want to talk about, right? The uh, defensive transitions that you have will be um, basically the first one is if you're low handing. Yeah. Right. So let's. So I'm gonna do the transition. Or yeah. the, the... So I'm low handing. I know he's a hooker. I'm like, okay, low hand is a great counter to yeah. a hook. So yeah. I'm gonna low hand this guy. And I know that the hook is my best move. It's where I want to go. If I can turn him into a hook with what he's trying to do, it's probably a good move for me. Um, but I know it's gonna be difficult because I know he wants to low hand. So first thing uh, is I'm gonna grab a little bit low, and we're gonna talk more about setups before. But I'm gonna grab a little bit low and leave a bit of a gap here in the uh, in in the setup and when we hit I'm gonna hit high like I'm trying to supinate and set my hook and when I feel him committing to dragging and dropping his riser at that point I'm gonna actually roll with a post so I'm not I'm not trying to roll out this way I'm trying to get across the table create a bit of a side threat and then once I've he's committed to dumping his riser, then I'm basically switching my pressure to my fingertips and trying to pull through the top of his hand this way and turn it into a bit of a post. Yeah, because obviously the post is a great counter to the low hand. He's on top of my hand, con completely controlling my pronation and riser. Mm -hmm. And it's very comfortable uh, pin from that point. Yeah, and what where you're gonna feel that as you get used to it is, as I feel him getting into my pinkies here, and I feel this gap in pressure up here, I immediately shift my pressure from trying to contain this up pressure that he's giving me to the pressure I'm not feeling and filling that gap. And that's that's how you're gonna learn how to feel that transition yeah. quickly. And then I'm stuck containing him yeah. in a bad position. Exactly, and hopefully that's, uh, again, also as we established before, why you have to be versatile. If you, ha if you have no idea how to post, then you're not going to be able to do that move, yeah. you know? So 
learn learn all the moves, but that's the that's definitely the best one uh, for what is the most effective counter for a hook, which is the low hand top roll. Yeah. And just learning how to post into it. One more transition. So uh, this one is very tricky to do. But it's the coolest move in arm wrestling, probably. By far. It's yeah. got a few different names. Uh, most traditionally, it's just called a reversal. Uh, then, uh, I don't know if the douchebag or the can opener came first, mm -hmm. but the douchebag is basically the same thing. We didn't make a video about that and got it kind of wrong. We did it backwards. But the, re the real douchebag by Jake Tar Charles is a reversal uh, from a hook. And then, obviously, the most famous of them all, because he is the most famous of them all, yeah. is Devin Larrett with the can opener. Yes. Can opener! Yes, you can. Okay, so um, this move starts from a hook. Yep. You're both deep inside. You've got your wrist flex. Who's gonna do it? I'll do it. Okay. okay. So it's very difficult from this point to try and break open his wrist and get into a top roll. It's it, almost impossible. If we're, what he means by this point is we're just in a static kind of hold position and neither of us are driving. We're, we're just in that like waiting for the other one to make a move. If you go from that position and try to reversal, it's usually next to impossible and not a great decision. Yeah, it's, just gonna, it's gonna lead me to opening myself up and put him in a better position. And I have so much time to focus all my energy on containing that rotation from him that uh, it just makes it very difficult to to roll out of it. It's 100% it's, it's not the way you're supposed to do the move, in yeah. our opinion. So something we've talked about a lot of times before is creating another threat, which allows you to use another door uh, against your opponent. So right. in this case, we're gonna use a sideways threat, pushing to the side, and then, then relaxing that sideways threat. So then he applies the sideways threat. And as he does that, I'm gonna use that pressure to, to reverse and roll into his hand. And when you do this, if you start playing with this move with uh, buddies on the table and stuff, what you're gonna notice is that when we're in this hook like this, when I go to drive, I basically feel like I'm pushing the pressure through this part of my hand, like I'm, I'm pushing through here. So when I go to drive, and he rolls, I'm, I'm pushing into all this meat and all this bone that's here, and then all of a sudden it rolls, and it's in my fingers, and now the pressure is like, it's like I'm pushing into a gap and forcing my own hand open. Especially if he times it right where he gets me right as I go to drive, it's gonna happen so quickly that it just doesn't even, like it's, it's at that point, it's impossible for me now to focus my pressure here and bring him back in, Yeah. right? So <clears throat> as Alex said, the key is the alternate threat. So if I do it to you, if we're in the hook and I drive this way and then I come back as soon as he drives, that's when I roll out. And I, I try to, it's kind of like uh, if you're leaning on somebody in basketball and you spin off their shoulder like to go the other way, that's kind of what I'm trying to feel. I feel that pressure coming across. I kind of meet it and then roll around it that way and that's definitely the best way to do a reversal and I think John Brzezink is probably the best at actually doing this and I'm gonna put the replay up now. Roll the clip. Yeah exactly. <laughs> So that, I mean, that's just, it's just brilliant. The way you see him drive to the pad, not finish. He Maybe he could have finished there too and he just wanted a reversal him. And as soon as he brings it back to center of table, it's like he, he's bringing him back with his own pressure. Like uh, Johnny Walker's pushing back towards center. John's letting him like push back and then turning it around right at the top. And it's, fuck, it's gorgeous. Yeah, and, and he just, just did, did it to Zola, yeah. Yeah, and you, on you command. pointed out. Yeah, 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 on uh, command by Eng Engen. Engen Terzi calls it out, can you reversal? And he just, <laughs> and he even did it almost from like, like, uh, Zoloev was driving, yeah. but but he kind of like he pulled him into the drive a bit, and it wasn't as like as perfect uh, of a setup on the drive, but right. he still got the. Good, he didn't need to because he is that much stronger than Zoloev, at least in that match. Yeah, but it, it will not work if your opponent is is already dug in, and then you try to roll them out. It's very difficult. But if you can get them to drive on you, that's when it's going to become effective, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so last thing, setup tricks. Yeah. Well, regrips quick. Oh, right. regrips really quick with the hook. The regrip is basically depth. Basically, every time that, like, if I so I drive this way and I come back up. When I come back up, I'm just trying to get my height and depth in my wrist. I'm not necessarily trying to climb his thumb and get into his hand. I'm trying to get past his hand. And like, if I could pull him like this, you know, that yeah. would be 
nobody like that's it. Okay. Yeah, it's the same similar pressure to the post where you're, you're supinating and rising, but I'm I'm not trying to climb his thumb as much as I am trying to get around his hand. Yeah, and it, and and that supinate like because of the way you're pulling. Like if I drag to you this way, I might instead of. Uh, instead of like coming up this way, I might actually just push to the side yep. and that's my regrip. It's not even, I wasn't even making a drive to the side. I was just pushing to the side to get my hand up and, and then, then look at the, the, the hand gap. position. Yeah. And then like, from I'm, I'm, my fingers are on his wrist. Yeah. And then from there I could drive again. I can drag again. Um, you know, you got a lot of options. Right? Yeah. So the last thing now, the setup tricks. Right? Yeah. Okay, so now with the setup tricks, the first one is going to be a bit about elbow placement, and this is really effective in the hook and in the hook battles as well. Uh, even in the center where we were just there, like you really want to learn how to use the elbow pad to absorb pressures, uh, and that's basically what this setup trick is. So again, if I know he's a low hander and he's going to set up closer to the front of the pad and really try to drag to the back of the pad, <clears throat> even though he's got a longer lever than me, I'm going to set up a little bit back on the pad like even a little further back than center and put my hand down and try to force him to come down to me a bit as even if, if he doesn't have to go back or whatever it is, the point is that I want to keep my elbow away from the front so that I have room to move while he drags. Yeah, and now, so I'm in the middle of the pad, I have less room to drag and he still has all this room to yeah. come forward. And ideally, we'll talk about with the next setup, the hand position for a low hand, you might want to be able to create a gap, but if I can grab him low and have this gap on the pad that I have to move with, especially if he's a big dragging low hand top roller, this is going to be really effective. If he's more about getting up and rolling with his low hand, then I might want to set up the way we're going to show you next. But if he's big into dragging, this uh, leaving this gap on the pad is huge. So ready, go. He goes to drag back. I come forward and I have all this room to move on the pad. So now his drag and roll hasn't gotten into my fingers the same as if I was here, ready, go. And I'm trying to come across. He's really into my fingers now. It re really feels like he's coming out of my hand and I feel my wrist about to go where if we were back in that other position, ready, go. I feel more on top, even though he is like, he's up in my hand a bit. But again, a game of millimeters, it's so much different than this. Like, it's a completely different game. Definitely, yeah. Right? <clears throat> so again, the, uh, the elbow placement, a, a way I love using that is I'll get into somebody's arm, I'll drag them back a bit, and I'll be holding them here, and then they'll go to drag and pull me all the way to the side of the pad, and I just go with the pad, and all that, uh, you know, effort that they tried to put in, they basically don't get any resistance until they've used up all their pad, right? <clears throat> Yeah, and you use that use that time to gain a better position while I was trying to be offensive. Yeah, so with hook pulling, really pay attention to where your elbow is and how you can maneuver it to give you an advantage. And one of the first places to start is in the setup so that you can come forward on the pad to take your opponent's drag away. <clears throat> so now the hand position. Yeah, so that one worked really well against the dragging uh, style low hand top roller. So now you do a yeah. rolling one? Okay. So if I'm gonna do more of a, a posting low hand top roll, yeah where I'm, I'm coming up and more into this position where I'm trying to break open his uh, fingers this way. Yeah. Then And that one would usually be more about side pressure when someone's doing that, right? Like they're gonna try to get up and then yeah. rock way to the side. Uh, if I feel that my opponent is, is, or I know that he's the kind of top roller that's gonna come forward, this is one like Rick Heidebrecht does this kind of a top roll. Yeah. And that's again, cause his lever's so long, he can do it from way the fuck back here and barely move his elbow forward and he gets this huge amount of rise. The best way to beat that is with a gap, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set up height this way. So now I'm right at the front of the pad. I may be off to the side so I have somewhere to come across, but I'm up as high as I can with my thumb low and then I'm trying to leave, instead of coming down and grabbing his actual hand, I'm trying to just grab this top knuckle and leave a big gap here. It might be hard to see, but there's like a finger's worth of gap and, and air space in there. So as he goes to come up and roll, I can kind of let him slide in my hand and end up actually having good coverage. And again, it's kind of like the elbow pad. He's used up all his rotation, but he hasn't affected my hand at all. Yeah, so he was kind of loose with his fingers, so he's allowing my hand to just roll in and he just contains that roll and I'm not really breaking open his fingers at all. And one thing is with, when you do it, when you're doing this, this uh, soft, like flat finger move, you're really not worried, both moves actually, you're really not worried about your thumb when you're hooking, which is a great advantage in the setup is to keep ducking it a bit so that they have to keep coming down 
uh, and then you're just, again, all you're worried about is getting coverage mainly with these two fingers in the in the bottom of their hand so that you can control their pronation a little bit. Yeah, and then from there you have obviously all the options available to you. Yeah, and then the last one would be the grabbing low. So again, really effective for a poster or someone with a longer arm. Uh, if you can set up down or a little bit back, I like to, but as opposed to grabbing them up high, like most people think is the best way to grab somebody, you, so instead of grabbing them up here in between the knuckles, I try to grab them on the bottom, like right on this knuckle here. Yeah, it's giving so, you greater control over my thumb, uh, and if you can attack the pronation of the posting top roller, and I'm here, then I'm fucked. I have no access to my back pressure. Yeah, exactly, and when you're controlling uh, this part of the thumb, you're you're trying to control this bone down here and like this meaty part of their thumb. Like that's basically what you're trying to find a way to grab onto. And then you're gonna to attack to the side in order to try to get wrist to wrist with them, right? Yeah. I think that's it. Set up tricks. Yeah. Hey Alex. Yo. Hey Jason. What's up? Just give me one second, guys. All right, so that covers the hook. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna cover low hand top roll. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions about this video. Let us know in the comments down below. Subscribe, smash that bell, do all of those things. And monkeys out, peace.